You are scrolling through your feed when you see it. That one blog post that's begging to be clicked. The title, the photo, and the topic, they grab you. And you're interested because you've been searching for it. Now at some point, every nonprofit has probably thought about starting a blog. I mean, blogs are a great way to communicate with your audience, build trust, build credibility, position yourself, and even increase donations. But for many charities, the idea of starting a blog can be daunting. I mean, where do you begin? What do you write about? How much time is this going to take? And how do you actually make sure people will see it? So in today's video, we're covering blog writing basics for nonprofits, along with some resources to help you make it super simple and efficient. And finally, we're going to discuss just a little bit of SEO to ensure that our brilliant blog posts are found. So let's get to it. one is doing some keyword research. Now there's only 10 spots, just 10 on the Google search page. And our goal is to ensure that our blog post lands in one of those 10. And we do this through keyword research. So before we write a word, it's important to do a little bit of research. Now it's going to help us understand what people are searching for, related topics that we can also use as a keyword and how to best answer questions. It'll also give us an idea of the competition that's out there. Now there's a few ways we can do this. One is a free tool like Google Keyword Planner, but there's also more robust tools like SEMrush, which I'll link in the description. And these tools are going to show us how often particular keywords are being searched for and give us those ideas of related keywords that we can also use. Now, another way to do some keyword research is to go to Google and type in the topic, see what comes up, see how many search results are there, click on some of the links and get an idea of what people are looking for when they search for that term. By doing some keyword research before we start writing, we can be sure that our blog post is targeted to the right audience, providing them with information that they are looking for. Step two is writing your copy. Now writing your copy can be a little bit daunting, but there's a few simple things that can help us get started. First, understanding our audience. What are they looking for in a blog? What tone would resonate with them? And once we've identified our audience, we can start writing. Use your keywords. Content is where SEO really comes to fruition. So suppose we're writing a blog post about ways to engage millennials in our cause. We could use possible keywords like millennial engagement, how to engage millennials, tips for millennial engagement. By utilizing these keywords throughout our blog post and in the title and in the headings and in the subheadings and in the body, we're going to signal Google that our article is relevant to those search terms. Now have a catchy headline and imagery. The headline and subhead are perhaps the most important part of your blog post. To get people to click on your article, you need a headline that pops and an image that grabs attention. Something that stops them in their tracks and makes them want to learn more. Now this is where we can be creative and don't be afraid to experiment. And here's a time saving tip. We always recommend Canva, which is a free graphics tool for stock photos and creating custom images. Now you did all that work to identify your target audience, so write for that audience. Your blog post should be about something that is interesting and relevant to them. Keep your audience in mind when you're brainstorming ideas and thinking about different topics that you can write about. Just remember, the best content always inspires, educates, or entertains. And here's another time-saving tip. Have you tried Jasper? It's an AI writing tool that can cut your content time in half. Just keep it concise. People have a short attention span these days, so make sure you get to the point quickly. You also should find high quality websites to link to from your blog post. One way that Google determines whether a website is high quality is by looking at the website that linked back to it. Now, including links to other high quality websites outside of your blog post will also signal Google that yours is high quality. Just be sure that the websites you link to are relevant and add value for your reader. And include a call to action. Add a CTA at the end of your blog post so people know what action they should take next. Do you want them to sign up for your newsletter, donate to your cause, share your blog on social media? Let them know. And finally, proofread. And proofread again. Checking for grammar and spelling errors will help ensure your readers take you seriously. Now, another time-saving tip, we use Grammarly to proofread everything. Step three is laying it out. Now, designing an influential blog takes more than just throwing up a few pictures and articles. Most website development platforms like GoDaddy or Wix offer blog templates and basic SEO. 
to really engage readers, you need to consider your layout very carefully. So here's a few tips to keep in mind, and that's make sure your header is eye-catching and easy to read. Your header is the first thing visitors see, so make sure to make a good impression. And use clean, simple fonts throughout your blog posts. Too much variety can be confusing and difficult to read. And you can organize your content into sections with subheads. Subheads help readers find the information that they're looking for quickly and easily. And use images sparingly and only when they add value to your content. Too many pictures can clutter up your blog and make it difficult to read. They can also slow down your load speed time, which is bad for the algorithm. Just remember, less is more when it comes to design. A simple, elegant layout is more effective than one that is overly busy or elaborate. Remember your keywords. Ensure that they are in the title as an H1 heading, in the subheads, and in the body. You should also make sure they are in the URL slug, meta title, and meta description. Step four, promote it. There are many places to promote your blog post. You want to ensure though that you're promoting to the right audience. You also want to make sure that you're promoting your blog post in a way that you are comfortable with. So there's a few places you can start. Obviously your social media account. And if you feel comfortable, you can also share it on your personal social media accounts. And this can help you get your blog post in front of a larger audience. Just be sure not to spam your followers with too many links. Facebook groups. Now there are many Facebook groups dedicated to specific topics. And if you find a group that aligns with your subject of your blog, you can share your link there. Again, just be sure not to spam group members. If you're comfortable with it, you can also use the comment section of other blogs. Take time to read these other blogs in your niche. And when you find one that's relevant to your own, you can leave a comment with a link to your blog post. And this is a great way to get in front of an already engaged audience who might be interested in reading your content. You can ask staff, friends, volunteers, ask everybody to share it, like it, and comment. Your blog is going to thrive on views and engagements. You can also submit it to social bookmarking sites like Quora and Reddit that can send a lot of traffic if your post is popular on the site. But again, just make sure to follow the submission guidelines so your post doesn't get removed. There are many other great places to promote your blog post. The most important thing is to find a method that's working for you and stick to it. Writing a great blog post takes practice. There's no getting around it, but by following these steps, you're going to be well on your way to becoming a pro. So I hope you found value and I hope to see you next week.